Hey guys, this is Locke. In this video, I'm going to be talking about EDA. And before I get into the review of EDA, I thought we should start with a practical example of how good EDA can make one of your units. So in this, uh, you know, like scenario test kind of thing, we're just going to look at Nungal's damage. So we're going to look at her damage without EDA supporting her. Then we're going to look at her damage with EDA supporting her. So in this scenario, first of all, we'll assume that EDA is not there. So that's just going to pass, and uh, we're going to see what Nungo can do. So I'm going to try to look for a crit and non-crit damage. So um, if she attacks, oops, sorry. Yeah, so she's going to attack this guy over here. So she does. if she doesn't crit, she does 4,078 damage. And then, with, so she didn't end up critting. So she did 4,000. 78 damage. Um, hopefully I can get her to do a crit because that would be good to show you. Hopefully she crits. Come on. Okay, so 6,500 damage, right? And um, again, if like these spear guys are going to come and attack right now because it's their turn now, right? So and now in contrast to this, let's look at what happens when Edda is around, right? So we'll go back to Edda's turn that I just left off at. So this time she is around. And remember, she did, Nungle did 4,000 damage, uh, non crit, and she did um, 6,500 damage with crit. So let's see what happens now. So these are the three skills that uh, she can do, which I really highly recommend if you're going to build that. These are the three skills that I think you should take. Um, and let's see. So now we're going to have Nungle. Okay, so Nungle's non-crit damage, it was 4,500 before, right? Now it goes up to 6,300. That's almost a 50% increase. Actually, it's more than 50% increase. Hopefully she crits. Let's see how much damage she does. She did crit. So the crit damage before was 6,500. That went all the way up to 10,100, which is a huge increase again. And there's, there's something else happening here as well, because if you notice, last time uh, these these guys, they came and attacked my party, like two of my units got hit. But this time, they ca they're not, they don't take a turn. The reason is because they're slowed. They're slowed quite uh, by a lot, in fact. Um, this liquor reduces their movement by 150. So you can see that, you know, having Edda around actually did a lot. Um, if this was another crit, like that thing would have been dead. So Nango with Edda could have easily killed both of these units, provided she got lucky crits. Um, and in the previous case, I mean, she did a little bit of damage, but you can see there's a huge difference between the two scenarios. Having Edda seriously helps your team by a lot. So I just wanted to start off with that uh, brief kind of scenario so you can see for yourself, you know, maybe some of the numbers. And I, I will actually just show you Nungle right now as well. So you get an idea of, you know, what she has, you know, what her stats are. This is her stats. She does benefit from this true lens which uh, the box benefits, the box that she was standing on benefits a lot because she's using True Lens. Um, but we'll talk about in the, that in a second. But this is my Nungle setup. Now let's go into Edda and we'll go into Edda and we'll specifically also talk about the box because the box, although it sounds like a joke, is actually a important part of Edda. So we will start with her trait. And her trait is actually pretty like boring. It has, it, it, it's pretty weak in my opinion. But this is her trait. So she does assisting attacks. So anybody within four tiles of her gets attacked by one of your units. The first time they get attacked and they're within range, Edda will also attack for 30% of her, of her damage. Uh, and this can also, unfortunately, only be used once in one round. So once Edda uses this assisting attack, she will not use it again until her turn is passed. Um, if you level this up all the way to the fifth star, her attack, you know, it, it increased by, actually she didn't even have an attack increase at the first start. So she gets an extra 12% attack increase, and instead of four tiles, she can target five tiles around herself, and she does 40% damage instead of 30% damage, and finally, she can use this twice around instead of once. Overall, I think this is not that great, especially when the upgrades are not that great. So I think this is actually a unit that you can kind of 
once you get her, you don't have to get another copy of her and you don't even have to, which is very, very low priority to farmer shards. There are a lot of units that really want their stars so that they can function at a high level. Edda is one that works out of the box. So just at the first, you know, just leave her, once you get her, just leave her that, like that. And she works, you know, 99% of what she does, she can do it one star as, you know, the fifth star. Uh, now let's talk about her skills, which, and at rank one, you should get this box. This box does a lot of things. So when you're standing on a two tile uh, height radius, you, your units get extra attack. Uh, I think it might be 10 or 20%, I'm not sure exactly how much, but they do extra damage. I'm sorry, they don't get extra attack, they get extra damage. They get extra damage when they're standing on, on two tiles and above. And if they're being hit from an enemy that's below you, they also get some extra defense as well. So they take less damage and they do more damage from the, by standing on this box, right? So all of, already you are just benefiting you know, whoever you want with this box. Um, secondly, you can use this box to block off choke points because if enemies, sometimes there'll be like two tiles that enemies can come towards you. So while they're doing that, put a box on one of them and they have to defeat the box first before they can come and attack your, your allies. So now you restricted the, the choke point to just one instead of two, or they have to go and stand on it. And when they're moving, they actually use one uh, movement point. So before, you know, if they have three movement point to get on this box, they're using two instead of one. So this box has a lot of strategic implications. You know, you can, um, you know, as I said, you can increase your, your damage output, your your uh, defense. You, you can have your tank stand on it to be able to take more hits. And you can use it as, you know, choke points. You can also use it to block line of sight. Like if, you're at, if enemies are raining arrows at you from afar away, put a box in front of you and now they're not able to hit you because they have to, you know, break the box first before they can hit you. The line of sight will be blocked. Uh, so this is one of the skills that I think has a lot of strategic implications. And if you're a player that likes the strategy in this game, you know, you want you like to play manually and you like to figure out different combos and, uh, you know, like you, like you don't have to have units that are over leveled. You just want to play strategically to get the best positions and, and whatnot. This is a character for you and this box is the skill for you because that's really what this box does. It, it does a lot of things and it's it's really, really good. Um, so she can be played as a DPS, but I would very highly recommend playing as a support unit. So, so skills like this that increase our attack and, you know, ignores targets defense when attacking enemies with a shield. Yeah. Okay. It's like if you're building her as a DPS, it's useful, but there are other units that you can use as DPS units anyway, which I think is so much better to build. Even like, uh, gold units, like there are archers, um, like divine grace that you can use instead so when you have somebody else that functions better as a dps why are you struggling hard to make edda a dps when she's already such a fantastic uh, you know support unit so i highly recommend you know don't build her as a dps and to build her as a support unit so you know they, like i would not take this i would take the box um for her rank three both these skills are really really good um so the wine barrel casting was when she tossed that, you know, wine bottle, uh, the wine barrel at the enemies. And it does basically three things. The first thing it does is uh, it deals a little bit of damage, 20% damage. It's not much, but it, it, it is something. Um, and it's an AOE. So it's an AOE one. It targets nine tiles and it applies liquor. Now, liquor does the two other things that I was talking about. So the first thing is it does damage. Second thing, liquor reduces the magic defense on everyone that's within this you know within this uh within this tile and anyone that steps on this tile and and, and moves on uh they have a negative 40 percent m defense debuff third thing their movement get hindered by one so you can actually use this as a way to slow enemies from approaching you if there is a two by two tile that is a choke point again you can just throw this at them and now they will spend so much more movement getting through them. So if you have a lot of long range units, we can use the long range units to attack um, these enemies as they're slowly walking through this uh, liquor barrel, like, you know, this, this liquor as they're walking through it because they'll spend more movement to go through it. So this is a debuff. It's also a good 
uh, skill to, as I said, hinder movement. So as you said, like as I just said, like both of these skills, these two skills are you can do a lot of like strategic, strategic plays with them. Even if you ignore the, um, the debuff, like the magic defense debuff, it slowing them down is already a pretty good uh, strategic value to that skill, right? And then it also reduces the speed by 150. Now that was what I was the point that I was trying to make with the with my uh, scenario sample that I showed you. Like in the first example, Nangal attacked, and then on their turn, both of those spearmen came and attacked my team, right? But when I used the barrel casting, one of the spearmen who was still alive, he couldn't go because the speed is reduced by 150. So now I get another chance to attack that spearman. And he's basically going to go last now because 150 speed is a huge de um, speed decrease, right? So this uh, this is a very good skill. Like even if you're playing a team that does not, um, what's it called? That uh, even if you're playing a team that isn't like magic reliant, if you're using physical DPS, uh, she can still work, and this skill can still work. This skill can still work if you want it to hinder movement and reduce speed. Um, but she can, but there's a, another skill that I can show you that also works with physical DPS as well. But anyway, I highly recommend this skill, but I also highly recommend this skill as well. <laughs> so this is, uh, so you probably will need to spend one Castilia if you're planning on playing Edda seriously, because both these skills are very good for her. So what this skill does, it, it increases, it's a huge buff. It's an AOE buff. It targets anyone within three tiles of her. It's a huge range. Um, it grants all allies within three tiles. Uh, magic defense up by 40%, uh, damage up by 30%, move one, right? And it dispels any kind of disruption from the target. So these are all the different debuffs that disrupt you. That, you know, for example, uh, if you have a debuff that doesn't let you use active skills anymore, if you use this skill on them, that debuff is gone. Okay, so it does a lot of uh, different effects. And, you know, there isn't anything here that only targets M attack, right? So it, this skill will benefit physical attack DPS and also magic attack DPS as well. Um, so the nice thing about her is that this box skill and this wine barrel casting are both instant skills. So you can get all her skills off in one rotation. You can use the box, then you can use this to slow enemies, then you can use this to buff of your team. And if somebody's going after you did all this, that person who's gonna, whoever's gonna attack next is gonna have such a huge damage boost, particularly if they are a magic uh, DPS character. For the reactions, this is a counterattack. This is a, basically a standard counterattack um, attack, which is not that great, I mean, in my opinion, especially for a unit like her who's not built to be sturdy. So, you know, one hit probably will do a lot of damage. Instead, I really like this shelter advantage. I think it's a very unique skill to her. And what this does is if she is around any item within one tile of her, the damage that she takes is reduced by 40%, which is a huge reduction, right? So I highly recommend the skill. And a lot of times you probably will have a box near her anyway. Um, if you're doing the weapon trial one and that boss, you know, when it does the AOE, um, like the AOE for a three by three tile, you can plant a box next to her and have her stand, you know, within that range. And the damage that she takes from the AOE is reduced by 40%. It's a huge, this is a great way to tank that stupid skill because I felt like it did a lot of damage. But this, using this reaction and a, you know one of her boxes, she can she can take a lot. She can she's able to um, survive quite a bit of damage with the setup. Now the rank seven skill, I feel like I made a mistake here in the one that I picked. I would have probably picked this one if I had to do it again. Um, so first of all, I, I have to say that you know. The way I set up Edda is probably the way you're, you're probably going to set up as well. Like these are the three skills that you're going to take, you know, because all these three skills are very, very good and they're useful for her. So it, if you are going to get another skill, like it's going to be a niche case, right? So there isn't going to be too many uses that you will have to bring another skill, but there might be some circumstances. So this skill increases her attack by 15% and allows her to move again by two tiles once she is attacked. That is, I mean, as I said before, she, you can build her as a DPS, but she's not really geared that way. She does so much better as a support character. 
So there's very, very, like extremely few circumstances where this skill becomes useful. On the other hand, this one, the rupture armor passive, there is a lot more useful applications for this because if you have a mainly physical DPS, right, uh, your loadout, your units that you're bringing are all doing physical damage, this is a lot better skill to have because you'll be casting uh, P, P defense down to on a target for two turns whenever you do a single target attack. I'm sorry, it's not every attack, it's a 50% chance, but that's a pretty high, pretty high chance to land the steep up on them. Um, what would you remove for this? I mean, it depends. Like you might remove this one because maybe your your goal is to do as much damage as possible. So if your loadout does all physical damage, this liquor debuff doesn't really help because it does magical da damage. Sorry, magical uh, defense down. So instead of this skill, maybe you're bringing this one so that your physical DPS can, you know, uh, defeat the boss faster. Right. One thing to note is that it says single target attack. It doesn't say basic attack. And there's a huge difference to it, which I'm going to explain in a little bit. But it's it's great that it says single target attack and doesn't just specify basic attack. Uh, but we'll come back to that in a little bit. So the next one, the rank 9 skills. So again, this shield break attack, um, it's good if you are building her, in my opinion, as a... Um, uh, a DPS kind of unit, but otherwise, I don't really see the point. Like, I feel like this is going to be very, very niche. Um, I think this one is a lot better, Dispelling Strike, because this is, there might be stuff that, you know, has different buffs on and you need a way to remove them. And there you go. Every time she attacks, she removes two, every time she does a basic attack, sorry, every time she does a basic attack, she removes two buffs from the target. Now this is very important again. This is uh, only basic attacks, not any single target attacks. I will talk about the difference in a little bit. And then finally, the rank 11 skills. No, I'm not. I haven't unlocked it yet. But of the two, this one seems like a DPS build, which I recommend against. I don't think that this is a a, a good skill to take. This one also seems. I mean, there there is a bit more support here. Uh, but I don't really find it that useful. So the supporting parts of it is that you can use this to restore one energy to everyone within a huge range, within four tiles of her, even bigger than her other uh, skills range. And then whenever she performs an assisting attack, her damage increases by 130%. So assuming that you're at one star, so that 30%, uh, it doesn't mean she does 130% of her attack. This 30% increases by 130%. So she will do somewhere close to maybe 70% of her normal damage as assisting attacks. Um, so again, it, it's built more about, uh, and then she also increases the number of times the effect can be triggered by two. So instead of only having it go off once per round, it, she would, can you can use her assisting attack three times in this turn, which honestly doesn't seem that great to me. I mean, the one energy is good because I feel like energy regen is great to be able to get off a lot of your skills. Uh, so that, that part is support type, but everything else, I don't know. It doesn't seem that great to me. So I think that you know these three skills, the box and then the two rank three skills are probably what you will go for most of the time. I think sometimes um, depending on your loadout, you might also want to potentially bring rupture armor, but I think there's limited use, for, use case for this. The other skills like you know the ones like the ones that I didn't talk about, like, you know, this one, shield break and storm sniping and so on. Yeah, you can build her that way as a DPS character. I haven't even tried to build her that way um, because I don't really see the point. I think there's so many other units that are better situated to do that than her. So instead, I'm just using as a pure support. So once you are able to get um, uh, the level 60 guidance of the world uh, tarot on her, she becomes really fantastic. Because if you read if you read the special effect, like, you know, the details, right? It reduces the cooldown of all active skills by one turn when not using any active skills and you just stand by. So this lets her recycle her effects. Like, all of these have a cooldown of four turns. But using this, you can pretty much use it every every two turns, I think. So you're, and, and if you look at how long these effects last for as well, um, 
this one lasts for three turns. So you're almost always, actually you're always able to have this these buffs on your unit, uh, on your on your team, by using this tarot on her. And same with this actually. This also lasts, I think, for two or three turns. But I basically was always able to, as soon as this thing dried up, the liquor is dried up, she's able to cast wine barrel casting again, right? Um, as far as resonance goes, I don't actually recommend the resonance I have right now. I don't find it very useful. First of all, because I just said, like, I can recycle these skills very easily with this tarot anyway, right? And this resonance, at the end of the turn, there's a 50% chance to gain engraving resonance, which lets you not trigger the cooldown of a skill. Um, so first of all, she can't even use it on her first turn because it has to be at the end of the turn. So if she's, you know, getting these three skills off on her first turn, uh, she has 0% chance to get, you know, this because like it's only at the end of her turn that there's even a chance to gain engraving resonance. I feel like it's very hard to make use of it and you really want to be cycling all these skills, right? So if she if she gets engraving resonance and it doesn't trigger on one of these, then what about the other two, right? Like, I, I don't know. I, I found it really hard to make use of this thing, so I'm probably going to pick a different one. If I had to guess, um, just thinking about it, I think that this is the one that I would go for. Um, the sword and wand. I think that one seems interesting. And the reason... Actually, no, it doesn't, because before actively attacking. Never mind. I thought you, you could just move. Because so I, I use her to move around a lot and, and not attack. So you have to actually attack to get the increased attack and defense. So never mind. That's not a good one. Um, then I'll probably go for uh, either the physical defense. Sorry, the yeah, the physical damage taken... Uh, decrease or the magical damage taken decrease. I'll probably go with one of those two because I think the other ones are not that great. Oh yeah, I don't know. I mean, I have to I have to really think about it, but I didn't really find any of that. I mean, if there was one that can like apply a level one debuff or something, I think that would be the best within like four tiles of her or something like that. I think that would be really cool but we don't have anything like that. So I probably wanted the wand plus pentacle or pentacle plus cup. Those are probably what I would go for, I think. Um, now, I talked before about what, what, why is it so important to differentiate between a basic attack and a single target attack. That's because um, if you look at this weapon, the meteor line, right? So whenever she's dealing damage with single target attacks, it inflicts debuffs. And the way that I'm using her, I actually do skip her turn. Like I don't attack, I just keep her on standby. Like she buffs, she uses her skills. And whenever she uses this skill, her turn actually ends because it's not an instant skill. So the next time her turn comes up, she just stands still. So she's not attacking. There's very few turns she gets when she does a physical attack. So her damage her well, and her attacks are coming from her reaction skill, assisting attack. This assisting attack skill is not a basic attack. So she will not get whatever this uh, effect is. She will not get dispelling strike. She will not remove buffs. And if you have any equipment um, that says something gets triggered on a basic attack, the assisting attack is not a basic attack. So it will not trigger on that. But instead, this one, this one is any time you use a single target attack, and this dispelling strike, sorry, this uh, assisting attack does count as a uh, single target attack. So I'm able to actually get debuffs on enemies without when attacking. Like it does a little bit of damage, very, very little, because this is the modifier is only 30%. But I'm able to get, you know, random debuffs on them. And that helps, right? Like maybe it'll be a reduced attack, reduced. Actually, you can probably see what they are. So these are the debuffs it could be. Reduced attack, reduced critical, critical reduced defense, or reduced um, healing received. And, you know, like, why not? I think this is a, this is, this is, this is okay. Um, if not for this one, another one that I might use uh, would be the Whale Hunter, if you have access to that. The Whale Hunter, what it does is it inflicts infliction, infection, which is basically like a damage tick. It's like a DOT effect, damage over time. 
um, the more stacks that you have on the enemy, the more damage they take. Um, but there's only a 50% chance at the first star to cast Infection. Um, I think at the fifth star, you have 100% chance. Yeah. So at the fifth star, if you're able to get there, then you have 100% chance to cast Infection. Infection. Um, but everyone should have a, like a one-star Meteor line because you actually get it from one of the quests. Uh, so, you know, and I got this weapon. I only got this weapon very recently. If I had Whale Hunter before, I decided to, you know, build this one up. I probably would have gone with Whale Hunter. I think that's more useful, although I do realize that um, these infection or DOT type effects are not very useful in boss fights. So if you're targeting boss fights, just know that infection is not going to do much damage to the bosses. But you're still going to do, you know, your basic, whatever your reaction attack damage is. Um, but yeah, that's that's the difference between these two. So that that's how I would build her instead. Like, I'm not going to build her as a DPS. I'm going to build her as a very uh, functional support type character. And I think she does her job really well. Like, you, you saw the difference that Nungle's damage was when I used with and without her, right? But there are a lot of other units coming around the corner as well um, that I heard are very good support units. Um, so, you know, there are websites and resources available where it talks about their skills and, and uh, you know, what they do in more detail. So if you want to plan ahead and see, you know, what are you going to, what, what do you want to get, then you can do that. But I've heard from other players that through all the units that were released in the year in Taiwan, uh, there isn't any other character that has a magic defense in an AoE uh, like her. So I, I heard that she is still, you know, a very, in a very unique spot because she's the only one that can do that. So, and she's still rated really high in, in those servers as well. So I think by going for Edda, you're not going to, especially if you already have good magic characters, I don't think you're going to go bad by choosing Edda. Um, and I seriously think that she does uh, increase the damage output of your team pretty significantly. Um, and I'm having a lot of fun using her, especially this box skill at figuring out the best places to put it and, and use it. Um, it's, it's been great. So I really, I'm really enjoying it. And one last thing I want to say is that because I'm using Edda and Nungle together, uh, Nungle has this artifact, which I believe you can get one copy of it. You can select one artifact much later on, like when you are level 55, uh, when your account level is 55. Um, and this true lens, whenever you're attacking from high lens, so when you have two or more, because and, and this is going to be activated when you're starting the box, you increase your crit rate. Um, at the base one star, your crit increases by 12%, which is not which is not nothing. You can even put it on magic damage dealers, right? Um, you can put it on magic damage dealers and their crit will increase by 12%. Like you can ignore the plus one or, or plus four, I guess in this case, physical attack. For Nungle, this is really, really good because her physical attack becomes magic damage. So you actually want her physical attack to be high so that it gets converted to magic damage. Um, but yeah, she pairs very well with Nungle. She pairs very well with Beryl. But she can also pair quite well with physical DPS as well, because as I said, you can you can change your skill to use Rupture Armor instead to apply the physical uh, to apply the physical defense down debuff instead. So that's it for my video on Edda. Um, yeah, I think she's great. I think you know paired with this Tarot, I think she she does a really really good job. Um, and so I highly recommend her, um, especially if you have Nungle. I think she pairs, like, you know, fantastically with, with Nungle. Um, I, I do use Beryl as well, but I prefer to use Nungle with her than Beryl. Um, I don't know. It's just a personal preference of mine. Uh, I usually, when I'm using Nungle, I also use Cole. And with both of them, I can take care of this, uh, this leader buff. Whereas with Beryl, I, I don't have that. So that's the reason why I prefer Nungle. And I like Nungle's playstyle more anyway, because she's able to hit from further further out. Uh, anyway, so I, 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 I know this is about Edda, not, not uh, Nungle and uh, Beryl. 
but and I I really recommend her. I think she's she is a you know a really good character. Um, and you know as always, like I I think it's really important for players to know as well that you should just also go with characters that you really like. If you don't like her style, or if you don't want to figure out where to put the box, or if you just think she looks boring, or you know whatever it is, then that's fine. You know, get somebody that you'd be interested in. Because I think chasing something just because someone tells you it's good and you don't like it is probably going to burn you out from playing the game. So also, like, you know, keep your fun as a part of the game, you know. Um, how much fun you'll have with the character, how much you like the character, leave that also into your equation of should I get this character or not. This banner is still out for a few days, so I hope this, if, if you're on the fence about, you know, should you get her or not, I hope um, this video helps you decide. So anyway, that's it for this video, and um, yeah, this she's lasting for another three days, I guess. Three days, two days, until the 29th, until the 29th at midnight is when she's gone. So if you want to get her by then, you know, this is your chance. Anyway, that's it for this video. I go. I hope you guys have a good, you know, a good night, and I or a good day, wherever you're from, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take care now.